Hi everyone, my name is Isabella Sisilawati. I'm an excellent boy band enthusiast with decades of business experience. This video is a follow-up from my previous video where I have shown you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build a Power BI report from scratch which allow you to compare data across two different periods, something like this. This is a sales report. There is a sales trend chart in here, sales by city, sales by product across different time period. And then the user can select two different period, period one and period two, they can select the months. And then on the right over here, you get a waterfall that shows the sales movement from period one to period two by city as well as by product. And there is also a table underneath where you can see different sales by city across two different periods. How do we create this? As a recap in my previous video, I mentioned that there are two methods. Method number one is by creating active relationship in your data model. And method number two is by creating inactive relationship in the data model. And my previous tutorial, I have shown you in depth how to use method one, whereby we created two date tables together, and then we link them up into our fact table using active relationship. And today, I want to build on that. I want to build on the data model that we used in our previous tutorial. And I'm going to add a new date table, date three over here, and I'm linking it up to our original date table using inactive relationship. As you can see over here, these tables are connected using dotted line, and that is a sign of inactive relationship. At the end of the video, I will also show you how to design a Power BI report that compares data across three different periods using similar concept. Let's get started. Let me show you step by step how to use method number two, inactive relationship. Step one is to set up the data module. We want to expand our original data module by creating a new date table. Let's call it date three and let's use the following decks. Let's go to Power BI and click the model view. And then let's create a new table together, click new table, and then just type in date three equal to all no blank row date, which in essence is copying the date table so that we can have another one and we're going to call it date three. That's it, very simple. Once the new date table is created, then just check them, go to table view, and then have a look, date column, it's fine, month, year, that's not, nicely formatted. Let's just change that into month year, something like that. Nice. And then month and year. Once we have done that, the next step is to create the inactive relationship by joining date three to date table. Okay. Let's join them. Click date to date and then double click and then untick and then hit okay. And that's it. Your inactive relationship is now created. Now that we have completed the data module, let's move on to step three to create relevant sales measure that we can use in our visuals later on. Now, just to recap, in the previous video tutorial where we explored method one using active relationship, we have already created three measures, sales P1, i.e. to calculate sales for period one, sales P2, i.e. to calculate sales for period two, and sales variance to one, i.e. to calculate the difference between period one sales and period two sales. And Today, let's create additional measures using the newly created day three table, which we have joined to the rest of the data model using inactive relationship. And the DAX is as follows to create sales P3, i.e. the measure to calculate period three sales. And at this stage, some of you may be thinking, what does this DAX mean? Let's go through it row by row. The first row, it says calculate, open bracket, some sales value. It simply means sum up the sales value to get our sales. The next row, all day two, it means ignore the filtering from the date two table. Similarly, the next row where it says all date, it means ignore the filtering that happens in this table. And then lastly, it says use relationship date and date three table. What does that mean? It means activate the relationship that was previously inactive. And why do we write this? 
Because what we are telling Power BI is ignore filtering in day two, ignore filtering in date, which means there is only one filtering context that matters, and that is the one that happens in day three. Make sense? Which is why when we write the DAX for period three sales, this is associated with whatever filtering that happens in day three. Let's go to Power BI. When you want to create new measure, you click the new measure button and then you type up the DAX. This is what I have shown you earlier. And we also have sales P2 from previous weeks and sales P1 from previous week. Our newly created measures earlier, sales P3 will be used in these tables as well as in this table. Now, in addition to sales P1 and P3, this table also require sales VAR 31. So let me just show you the DAX associated with that. That's just comparing sales P3 minus sales P1. So comparing the difference between sales in period 3 and 1. We will also need to create sales waterfall. This is a simple waterfall which is not the standard visualization. So if you don't have them, you need to click these three dots and then click get more visuals and then type simple waterfall. Yeah, so that then it can show up in your visuals. If you haven't used this before, please watch my previous video where I have gone through in depth how to create this waterfall from scratch when I was outlining method number one, how to compare across period using active relationship. Now, if you have seen my video from previous weeks, then let me just show you the measures that I have used to calculate the variance for Brisbane, Melbourne, etc. See, when you hover, you can see that I have renamed sales for 31 Brisbane into Brisbane. Yep. So the original DAX is really simple. Calculate sales for 31 and then comma keep filters sales city equal to Brisbane, which means we want to always show the variance that is associated with Brisbane in this waterfall chart. And then similarly, when we are doing Melbourne, then we replace Brisbane with Melbourne. And then for products, it's the same we need to have sales bar 31 eraser and the DAX is keep filter sales product equal to eraser. All the measures that I have created to compare sales from period three and period one can be found over here that have been nicely grouped together, whereas the one above that was from previous weeks. I will make this file available for download in my website lighthouseanalytics.com so that you can play around with it if you want to. Now, once you have created all the measures, then obviously the next step is to create the tables and the waterfall. As mentioned earlier, we can follow the exact same steps as outlined in my previous video. The only difference is we need the new measures comparing period one versus period three. Instead of in previous video, it was using measures that compare period two and period one. What if we want to compare across three periods, period one, two, and three, and present them in a waterfall that can show movement from period one to period two, and then period three, and being able to define which period do we want to classify as period one, which one as period two, and which one as period three? No problem, it can be done. It can also be displayed in a table where you can show one row for period one, period two, and period three, and then have the various variances. Sales for two one is to compare period two versus period one, three two is to compare period three versus period two, and then three one is to compare period three versus period one. Not a problem. The only thing that we need to make sure is we have three dates table, which we have set up in our data model earlier, and then we need to have three sales measure, period one, period two, and sales for period three. And then we also need measures for various sales variances. For example, variance to one in our model is to compare the difference between sales from period two and period one. For three, two is to compare the difference between period three and period two. Once you have set up all these measures, then just stack up your waterfall and create your table. Okay, let's go to Power BI. This is the waterfall where you can compare across three periods and then 
if you click the measure group, the various decks has also been displayed over here that you can use, applying the same principle as what we have covered before. So I sincerely hope that you find this tutorial useful and you can expand this concept to make sales waterfall across maybe four periods or five periods, however many that you want, you can apply similar technique. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up, leave some comments and do subscribe so that you don't miss out in my future video. See you next time.